Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. Another day, another episode of Jeepers with Cool Guy. You know what we're going to do tonight? We're going to take apart the heater box for our CJ7. One thing to take in consideration is the blower motor. If it doesn't work, you can always get a replacement. But the difficulty within that is that the used ones off of the Wranglers, the YJs, or after that, or even the aftermarket ones, come with a larger housing for the actual motor. So you have to cut a larger hole inside of this metal sheet to make, make it fit. So it's a little more difficult and from what I've heard it's pretty annoying. So hopefully your CJ7 blower motor works. Hopefully my CJ7 blower motor works and we don't have to worry about that. Overall the whole heater box is fairly simple. It's got just a couple components. It's got your blower motor which is attached to this wire which goes right here and that attaches to your wire and harness. Pretty simple. It's brown. Take note. And the heater core. Heater core, simple, easy to replace. Uh, they do make aftermarket ones for that um, but really unless the thing is cracked or clogged or rusted through, there's really no need to replace it. They're fairly self-contained units and pretty easy to uh, maintain. There's a couple other cables and some flaps with some foam on them, um, but that's pretty much about it. So let's get to it. We're going to start with removing all of the shell housing screws, which there is a whole bunch of them all the way around. And then after that, we'll take this lid off and we'll look at the inside. Tonight's heater box renovation is sponsored by Guinness Irish Wheat. Very tasty, very Irish, very weedy. Actually, no, it's not really sponsored. I'm just drinking that tonight. I'm going to start with the outer housing screws. These are hex heads, uh, one quarter inch. Realize that the other side of this is a plastic housing, so be very careful when you're pulling these things out because the last thing you really want to do is strip the screw coming through here because then you won't have a nice good seal that we will rebuild with butyl tape after this. Of screws. Next thing for us to do, got a couple other, uh, I don't know what these are attached to, so I'm going to leave these on um, until I take this out. There is a nut over here uh, that's attached to, I believe, the actual cold air return screw that I was referencing right here. Uh, there's a bolt on the other side here but this is one of those uh, star washer nuts and I want to make sure that I don't strip this thing out because a lot of the things on here are kind of hard to replace. The star nut is 3 8 yeah 3 8 I'm just using a crescent wrench on the other side. Oh that was easy. Oh, oh man don't lose that. Now next step before we take off the actual backing plate here we need to remove the gaskets, uh, the foam gaskets that go around each one of the pieces. So I'm replacing all of these, so I'm not all that concerned about their well-being, considering they are 35, 40 year old rubber foam gaskets. Probably not gonna be all that effective. I purchased mine from uh, Quadratech. I you know, a lot of my stuff from Rock Auto, too, but I'm finding that for a lot of the really, truly old classic vehicles, like the, um, well, I guess you could call this an old classic vehicle. There's a lot of things that aren't necessarily 
too easy to find. So I have to go to more of the specialty type stores. Well, I was on there pretty well. Not surprising. So there's one. I guess I really didn't need to, I didn't need to take it off the blower motor itself because I'm not taking apart the blower motor. At least I don't think I am. Hopefully I'm not. There's a small ring one down here around the I guess this is maybe the drainage port, the drainage tube for the uh, the blower. Or the actual overall housing. This is a ring. Easy to come off. And then in various spots, there's four of them total. These are the ones that actually go against the firewall. They're not gaskets, more like bumpers. Uh, and these just provide a little bit of space between the firewall and your blower motor or your blower uh, assembly. I haven't found replacements for these yet, so I don't know where to get them, so I'm going to try and be careful with them. Might have to reuse them. Tag and bag! You might have heard me say it before. And then there's one around your heater core. Dual port. These things are actually still in pretty decent shape. Those are your three main gaskets. Alright, now I'm going to try and get a small little wedge tool in here because you kind of have to break through this. Well, okay, you don't have to break through it, it just kind of falls off. Ha <laughs> ha! Right. Down here, there is a clip that goes over the draw cable for the uh, fresh air door uh, vent. Just be careful when you're pulling it out. You don't know what's in there. Small woodland creatures. There's your blower motor assembly. Yeah, your heater box assembly. A bunch of junk. Got some uh, dirt in here. Uh, the rubber around the doors seems okay. Not great. This is another one of those things that's kind of a pain in the butt. I mean, you're not going to be able to find replacement gaskets for this stuff, so you might have to figure out some way of revitalizing it. I don't want to spend $200 or whatever it is for these replacements off of old ones. And really, it's the foam that kind of falls apart in here. This is should be easy to replace. We'll have to figure that one out. One thing I did want to point out. I am going to have to replace my uh, heater core. The reason I say, oh, that's what that screw is for. This screw right here, screw right here, screws the heater core, the top part of the heater core, into this support panel. Let's go with 5 16 5 16 There's actually two, top and bottom. Okay, now I can actually just take this thing off. I'm gonna put this down here. Here's our little hamster wheel. As I was saying before, my heater core, I believe, is toast. The reason I say that is because there is a whole bunch of oxidation on here, which indicates that there's moisture getting through here, and it has, because uh, this is all copper, or brass, and it has uh, oxidized that and then you could also see that there seems to be some kind of a leak in this spot. So, there you go. I have a cracked heater core. So I'll have to replace this. I think I have a backup from a, uh, another Jeep heater box that I had lying around. But this is a good indicator that you're going to need to replace this. Took a moment there to clean everything up. So I just basically got a scraper out, took off all the old butyl tape, because I'd rather be able to move this thing around and not have the whole place just disintegrate and fall on and dust up the whole place. One thing I did want to note, the two screws, I'm replacing them with stainless steel ones that hold the uh, heater core to the back support panel are number 10 sheet metal screws. Uh, they're half inch in length. Alright, let's flip this over. Next steps is to take this component off. This, I believe, is where the fresh air comes in. 
and this is the main uh, vent spot uh, that circulates the air in through here into the heater core and then gets blown out towards your feet or up into the defrost uh, up above through the dash from this component. This is a really short these are probably three-eighths, maybe a half inch. Total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. It's an odd number. And then at that point, this housing should easily come off. Basically, it's a big horseshoe. Essentially, we're going to take the whole heater box apart. This is one other piece. Start by taking off the spring. That controls the door. Then you just need to flip it over. There's a pressure washer. I'm not exactly quite sure what these things are called. I'm just going to call it a pressure washer. Tension washer, maybe. Apparently, using needle nose pliers to take them off is fairly easy. Plastic washer on that side. Well, not actually a plastic washer, it's more like a uh, plastic uh, retainer. Should be able to flip it over and pull the rod through the unit. The thing that would be really interesting to see how it plays out is replacing this foam. I don't know what this is made out of. I don't know if you can get replacement for it. Hopefully you can. This is before and this is after. We're going to go with some dual action here, a two-part combo. We're going to take off this middle flap that is held on with a rubber washer. These are just like the pull switches in your dash. Exact same scenario. This is held on simply by one of those tension washers. This connects right to this bracket, which was part of that earlier uh, star nut that we had um, holding in the backing plate. You unscrew that and then this whole unit for the most part just comes right out. Um, this screw is a specialty screw. As you can see it's got a uh, kind of a built-in washer. It's almost like a three-part uh, pyramid type screw. This is also held on to with one of those tension washers. Makes it a little bit easier if you get like some needle nose pliers or something that's got a very long snout to it. And pretty much you just have to wedge these things off. I'm going to switch it up. I'm not going to go with the uh, needle nose pliers. I'm going to go with the brute force of just lineman's pliers. And just slowly work it back and forth. Nice and easy. Don't squeeze too much. There. That one comes off. And then from that point, all right, let's take off this one. There's those two. And at that point, this wire connecting cable should come off. This is what I was talking about earlier with it. Rubber gasket that's kind of getting a little flimsy. You're not going to find this piece. You're not going to be able to order a new one of these. So do your best to try and keep this in the best shape as possible. Pull the cable right through. This thing obviously is so rusted, maybe some three-in-one oil will loosen it up. Now let's take off this boy. And there's only one screw holding this in, this retaining screw. This is a number 10 uh, sheet metal screw, but this one happens to be three quarters inch long. And all of this does this comes right out nice and easy. It's got a metal clamp here that holds on, holds it to the plastic, but it's also got this metal or uh, plastic lip that just fits right inside of it. Just pull it right out. Last but not least, we need to take this off, but I don't really know how to get this thing out. The reason I say that was because of the angle. First things first, take off the plastic washer that goes on it. You're just going to have to kind of force it, so if you pop it past the joint, that then I think you can kind of start working it through just kind of try and get the angle on it just push it down and through it's got a rubber or a plastic retaining 
piece on it just like the other one. But that's pretty much your whole heater box. That's it. At, at this point, it is just a plastic core. But let's get this cleaned up. One last component. I'm gonna get the blower motor off. Take off your five screws. There's your blower motor. The other thing I should probably do is take off the uh, hamster wheel nut. The hamster wheel sits on a metal post that is um, shaved down on the sides. So I think that that's just so it can have extra grip. A couple washers in there. One thing I want to emphasize is when you're doing all of this stuff, when you're getting down into the nitty gritty of certain things, always document your work. Make sure that you're taking photographs of every piece before you completely disassemble it. The only reason I say that is because even on like the blower motor here, there are three washers uh, that go on to the actual the drive shaft. So I want to make sure that I don't get those mixed up. And when I put this thing back together in a week, a day, a month, uh, I'm going to have three washers and I'm going to be like, well, wait a minute, which one goes where? And depending on how specific it is, it could screw up the whole system. So make sure you document everything that you're doing, tag and bag everything. Now that I'm going to keep going down the rabbit hole, I'm actually going to take this blower motor apart to see what the inner workings look like. Well, I went all the way down the rabbit hole. <clears throat> On the back plate, there are four spots. And through those four squares are these two little pronged teeth that are separated out. Take a pair of pliers, very carefully squeeze them together to not snap them off. Then you can just pull this unit right out of here. There's two very big magnets on the inside here and it looks like a pivot point. It's not actually a bearing because it doesn't move down deep inside here. I'm probably going to tape this off, sandblast this whole thing. There's your switch, basically your connection point, which is held in rubber piece, gasket right there. It just slides in, just like that, slides out and it's connected to a nice piece of copper wire that goes inside. And then this spins on the inside with magnets and there's your electric motor. Now if you really 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 want to there's two magnetic points in here and these are spring loaded. If you want you could push them back and pull this whole piece out. I'm not doing that because everything in here looks really good. So I got myself a can of QD electronic cleaner and just sprayed this whole thing down. Took a toothbrush, scrubbed off all the extra dirt and sprayed the whole thing down again. Got all the dirt out of it. So the thing looks like it's in great shape. So here I'm just going to wind up sanding this stuff down. Uh, don't use steel wool because this stuff's all magnetic and you're going to have steel wool flakes all over the place and embedded in there and pretty much you'll never get them out. And then I'll, I'll end up taping this stuff off and sanding it down and painting it. Hopefully I will be able to show you the aftermath of the way that this thing looks after I put it all back together. But for the most part, there's your rabbit hole, there's your motor. This is all in good shape. I hope it runs.